today is going to be the same. Today we have a slightly different program. Yesterday we didn't have a closing keynote, but today we'll have a Matteo of uh, 500 startups. So please stick around for that. That's going to be really exciting. But it was really from gifts from family and friends, and then as the business grew, perhaps um, accessing credit lines through the bank. So the truth of the matter is that no, I never have needed to raise um, from, from angels. As you can imagine, I, being the founder of the I have, I know a lot of people, a lot of investors, and so I had all these doors open to me, and a lot of notes, right? Uh, didn't matter if you were in the US, San Francisco, New York, Boston, Austin, uh, London. I went all over the place, and, uh, and and most everybody said no. So I had, you know, let's say 100 meetings, I had 10 yeses at the end of the day, and it was uh, a real eye-opener for me, and I think the lesson for every other entrepreneur is that it doesn't matter who you know, how many people you know, raising money is hard and a lot of work, and you have to be expected, um, you have to be expecting that um, most people will say no. If you are, as an entrepreneur, and you are pitching to a family-owned business entity, uh, one thing I have to say is that, you know, be, be sure of exactly what you want. Um, there is a reason, there should be a reason why you're approaching a particular family-owned group or industry. Uh, what are the potential synergies that you could potentially uh, you know, sell and be part of, part, be, form part of your of, of your marketing pitch? Because at the end of the day, as an angel investor, we also look, or rather, I also look at being a bit more involved in the business and helping that business grow. And that's why you find most of the businesses that we we'll invest in are businesses that I can also be able to add value either through networks or because of knowledge of that particular industry that they're in, right? So on lines that specifically, I mean, I, I don't think I'm those when you know they're talking about quite fast. And it's really sad. Because you're like negotiating valuations like you're negotiating for the price of a bottle of water. You know, you're like, um, 5%, no, I want 40, okay, I'll give you 35. And you're like, are you really calculating in your head? You know, we're there with pens and notepads, so you know, we're doing like a quick calculation and you know, saying, okay, if we do 40% for 1 million, it means that the company is worth this much and at this level. So we're able to make that quick decision, but the guy's just standing there. Literally, like he's negotiating for bread. So it's really, um, there's a few people who stick to their dance and who will go and consult, they'll come back, and you can tell, okay, those are probably people who are looking for the second stage investment, so they are a bit more clear on what they're talking about. Um, but I think, and it's not just for the entrepreneurs who come into the den, I think it's just generally for very many young entrepreneurs who don't understand valuation a lot. A lot of people will base their valuation on the industry. You know, you'll come and say, I want to start a magazine in the print industry in Africa is worth this much and da da da, so the value of my business is this. And you're like, um, have you sold one copy? And like, no, but you know, this is what it's going to be like. So a lot of people value their businesses based on the whole ecosystem and just necessarily work like that. The volatility of outcomes and the substantial amount of failure that happens in startups. As a result of that, they'll do one or two investments. Uh, those investments generally will fail, and then they'll be, what the fuck, this doesn't work, tech is like, you know, not going to work in my country, right, or in my region, or our entrepreneurs suck relative to other entrepreneurs. Um, or they want to take 50 to 80 percent ownership of the company. Um, I'm guessing people are laughing here because I'm probably describing things that are familiar in the rest. It's, I've never been to Nigeria before, but I've seen this in about 40 countries around the world. Um, and my consistent feedback to those investors is get the fuck out of your shit straight and understand like what is going on. Because your consistent complaint is about the entrepreneurs in your ecosystem not being good enough. And you're wrong. When you say that, you identify yourself as a naive investor and I think a lot less of you. Because I've seen successful angel investors all over the world and they're generally not the ones that are trying to take 50 to 80 percent ownership. They're not the ones that are complaining about the local ecosystem. Uh, the ones that are successful are the ones who are actually pretty nice to entrepreneurs because they know otherwise that deal flow is going to leave. And they're pretty friendly with making connections around the world. Um, that's a difficult lesson for most angel investors to learn because they're arrogant and rich and they come from a lot of areas where they've already crushed it. But they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground in terms of internet, usually.
Um, there's not very many people outside Silicon Valley where they come with both industry expertise and capital. And they'll think that their industry expertise in real estate or in finance or in other areas is leverageable to the internet. Very rarely that is true in certain areas. Most of the times it's not true. Uh, I would like to close by thanking you for coming for our speakers, uh, for the entrepreneurs. This is the beginning of the journey. Now this day, like we said, it's a marathon, it's a sprint. Um, so uh, we're going to retire now. Um, and it's Friday, so you know, get out there, you know, check out the CES night. Right? Those who are flying, have a safe flight. Those who are hanging out tomorrow, be safe in the city. Everything is safe. Just you know, be just a little bit more vigilant.